Hello everyone, we're back with some more Ark Nova replay analysis. The loose theme of today is Aquarium, but there's not really a theme. Just got sort of two new players that I don't think we've looked at any games of on the channel yet. So the first one we're looking at is a game from Song Chen against Jason Bourne 11. We're on Geographical Zoo. can already see in the opening hand this aquarium, uh, but the goals are primates, species diversity, and Europe. End goals are architectural and conservation. Conservation, kind of difficult because Europe and primates don't go together at all. Uh, not starting with any projects either, so might be leaning towards architectural at this stage. But anyway, the opening hand, Aquarium, I think, is a very easy keep here. It's sort of the only playable sponsor in the first round. There's already a couple of water animals. This one even fits the Primates project, and it's just very strong early pilfering. Could also make a case to keep the Alligator. Being second player, you're not guaranteed to get the sort of two rep uni. Actually, it makes the opening very awkward because you want to get the two rep uni in order to play Aquarium, but it means that the McCork is not playable in the first round. So maybe you do start with like the Alligator. And then I'm not sure what else you keep. Possibly the Petting Zoo. I, I think it's too early for Wiles as special. Petting Zoo also pretty nice for species diversity. There's a, there's a lot going on in this opening display. Jason Bourne starts by building a size 2 in Asia. That could be a few things. Uh, I don't think anything that requires an Asia partner zoo though. Also interesting that it's touching water and not rock, I guess. The hand size uni was a very interesting choice, I thought, because it I think a lot of players, myself included, would just go for two rep uni to play Aquarium straight away. But I actually like Song Chen's plan here. Although it is sort of easily countered if the opponent snaps up Zoo School. The opponent starts with the Europe Partner Zoo. Makes sense, uh, just not sure. Sort of uh, like a little bit odd to build in Asia first and then grab the Europe Partner Zoo, but. Yeah, choosing to X out build, really wanting to snap something from this display, and it is Zoo School. Jason Bourne does let him do that, but it does play, uh, put down Federal Grants, which is a great sponsor to start with. Yeah, even spending an X to do this. Zoo School has two main advantages, I would say, which is... The, actual, the thing that I didn't like realize that's cute about this map is that you can start Zoo School up here in the corner. It gives you the rep so you can then play Aquarium. So it, like the layout works out very nicely. And then with Zoo School, you can also get the second petting zoo animal. Opponent plays Great Hornbill and takes two rep as their first reward. And, uh, sorry, two appeal, not interested in the one rep. And they still haven't used cards yet. So even just putting down Aquarium right now gives you sort of enough appeal that you don't really need to worry about having an animal played in the first round. You're still getting a decent amount of income. And there's, there's a lot snappable here, honestly, like prim Primatologist with the goals and species diversity is very snappable. Hydrologist now for Song Chen is amazing. Hydrologist on this map gives 26 money with all the water spaces. And now that it's giving like extra appeal for all the water, it uh, should be number one priority. So like Jason Bourne should probably snap Hydrologist here. Primatologist is the like clear second snap though.
does get down a petting zoo, uh, which is going to be great because Jason can't cause the break just yet. They do just take another build action for a single pavilion. And the thing with doing that is Jason's still not threatening the break, so Song Chen can just use his time to X out Associate. What that's going to do is allow him to play animals and then snap up Hydrologist straight away. No, oh, of course, uh, it's a sponsor to play anyway. Although I don't think you need to play Primatol just this early. Because the rest of Jason's round looks uh, pretty bad at this stage. Like, you have to do cards and... Like you have to X out something, then do cards, then do sponsors to cause the break. There's no guarantee that your opponent wants to cause the break. Especially if they're about to snap up Hydrologist, they don't. They get rid of the Stoat and Water Playground appears, which is also incredible. Yeah, I'm hoping the internet doesn't cut out. Because I uh, just cut out right before the stream started, so if I disappear, you'll know why. But we're good so far. I was debating whether you want to snap up Hydrologist or Water Playground, but yeah, Hydrologist is the, the clear pick here. Be amazing if you get both, though. Cobra also looking very nice. Uh, although with all this extra appeal from Aquarium, it's very unlikely that Song Chen will be in a position to hypnotize, especially with the early appeal from the petting zoos as well. Come on, chat. <laughs> Platypus shows up with has, which has another water icon. So things are lining up very well over here, although Jason does have a bit of a money lead, tiny bit of an income lead, but uh, much fewer much fewer points. This was a little bit crazy to me. So the decision to build three is so you can get the flamingo and draw it from range straight away. I guess the thing is the opponent's threatening to do the exact same action, build a size 3 and draw the Flamingo, so it does hurt to not be able to play Hydrologist first, but you can understand the priority, because Europe is still one of the projects, and Birds is not unique for Jason, but it's unique up here. I guess in the grand scheme of things, it only costs one money from not getting Hydrologist down first. Jason just grabs the Australia partner zoo now. Interesting, could be looking at the platypus. Yeah, Hydrologist is just insane here because look at all these single dot water spaces that are just, they're covered in money around them. This is the best map for Hydrologist. Does snap up the platypus. It makes enough sense with Bamboo Forest here to release it, plus the fact that it has a water icon and it's also a unique species. Totally get snapping it there. And another, another kind of interesting move, I guess, more out of necessity than anything. But the lack of money means in order to, to play the Flamingo this round, you need to grab the Europe Partner Zoo to afford it. Otherwise, you have to take like a weird sponsor action for some money. Uh, and I think a lot of players, even yeah me again, I would totally just grab the second uni here and not think about it, just like upgrade build animals or something. Even upgrade sponsors to play like Water Playground from range would be an idea, idea in my head. But choosing to go uh, split the unis and partner zoos and have no upgrades in the second round is... It makes sense here in this position. You could totally play... The, 
I think if the actions lined up better, I wouldn't mind playing the Flamingo first, but I don't know. It when when sponsors is at five and you have hydrologists there, I think it, it makes enough sense to play it. Because the other cool thing that Song can do now. Yeah, the opponent actually can't grab the water playground from range because they have no reputation. But with this uh, posturing from the Flamingo, you can grab the water playground from range, which is huge. Like just the amount of... Uh, grabbing four money as well, yeah. Okay. I think in terms of raw value, the... Two appeal is the best reward because one appeal equals roughly three money. So if you're getting four money, it's only worth like one and a third appeal. Uh, but with the extra money from actually, I don't know, grabbing the water playground is a no brainer. So there's already like seven water in hand right now. The money does let you build, but not a size... Well, okay, it does let you build a size 3 after Water Playground comes down because it's going to get you some money from Hydrologist. Oh yeah, but this is a... Okay, he did remember that the Platypus was coming up, so it does buy some time, although I don't really mind just Xing out animals. Just saving money that way. Right, this is totally a game where you can just... Not worry that much about projects and just spam the appeal. That that's what it that's what aquarium can do. More water icons for the opponent. They have four species, so pretty likely they're gonna win the race here. Sloth there, very, very interesting though. Would be great for both players. Um yeah, they're missing Penning Zoo Predator Bear, so. Like, Sloth Bear is perfect for the opponent. I do wonder if Song is going to snap it up now. Okay, the Venom does hurt, but, but that's the good thing about getting the 4 money. It buys some time. The opponent breaks there, so... Yeah, without the money, we would have just had to X out animals and just waste a complete action, but this way we at least got the Sloth Bear. Opponents in deficit of 10 points, but they are going to most likely going to hit species first. There are a couple of predators that show up. Opponent already has an Australia partner zoo, so can't stop them from playing either of them. And they both have water, funnily enough. Water Playground comes down. I was wondering, do you grab Expert in Herbivores here and try to fight for five species? But no, I think it's a lost, lost race. Just grabs the monkey instead. Still Primates is one of the projects. And there's Africa release. And there's another monkey that needs Africa. So uh, pretty good value. The opponent building a size 2 and the fact that they're building on 3 telegraphs that they have their 5th species. So, I mean, and they put it in Australia, so it's most likely an Australia predator, so it's probably the dingo we, we could assume. Which means, yeah, it's not, not worth fighting trying to get expert in herbivores and playing the soft bear because it's just a race that you're going to lose. First two upgrades are build and cards. Build I totally get. Maybe I'm a bit too blind upgrading animals, but I feel like the one extra card doesn't matter that much. I don't know that you really want to draw anything from range here either. I guess the fact that there are three water tags coming up means that maybe you do want to draw from range in the next round. Uh, but I, I like the animals upgrade because it's just getting you to 8 rep a lot faster. And I'm curious to see if we're going to see... We're going to see a size 3 in Asia, but is it going to touch water for the Macaulk or is it for the Sloth Bear? 
because the opponent's about to get in pilfering range when they support species 5. Nice kiosk. So it, it appears like it is for the sloth bear. Well, it most certainly is for the sloth bear. Opponent takes snapping first. I like two rep here for them. They're lagging behind on rep quite a bit. And they upgrade association actually. So it can potentially get a third partner zoo for that uh, second worker. Sloth bear into two appeal. Still think it's the best value. Game's progressing quite quickly actually, 32 to 22. I don't think you boost association here though, there's no no reason to. So it does feel like a like a little bit of a waste of it. I'm I'm curious on the reasoning behind playing the sloth bear before the McCork. Is it the McCork's not playable? Alright, sorry, the McCork's just straight up not playable because there's no Asia tag, that's why. Ignore that. Also a little bit sad that the alligator can't fit here. I was expecting the size 4 to be left for the alligator, but the water playground went, went down there to draw this monkey. Opponent builds a size 4, presumably for the sea lion that we just saw them snap up. Uh, they, only have, they only have two cards in hand, which is sea lion and something else. I like this little replay bug when the card doesn't show here, and like we see the little wombat on the edge of the display. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Need that uh, Age icon before the McCork can be played. Very nice draw, second draw anyway. This is a pretty dead card, but third petting zoo, amazing. Muskox is interesting because of the kangaroo as well. You basically build a size 4 enclosure and fit two animals in it instead of one. So I like keeping both of them. Yeah, just get rid of the dead card. And the opponent's in a bit of an awkward position in that they want to draw cards before they sunbathe, but they don't have hand size. Hey, STD. The opponent wants to draw cards so they can sunbathe, but the fact that they don't have hand size uh, means that they can't because Song can just cause the break next move. So it's like it's not a good value C line at all. I would probably just wait to play it. Sunbathing nothing is uh, just means it's it's straight up bad value because when you're paying for an animal. Like you get some discount for having the partner zoo, but part of it's part of like the value you're getting out of it is the sunbathing ability. And if you don't use it, similar to pack, if you don't have any pack, then it's just bad uh, money to point ratio. And it doesn't fit with any project either, so you're not getting benefit from that either. Song just spends uh, two X's to cause the break. I don't mind it. The opponent wants to do cards, so this is going to, and we can assume they don't have a sponsor either, so it's going to mean a quicker next round as well, because they're going to have cards and then sponsors in the way. I think Song is quite happy with fast rounds because he has a lot of expensive animals such as muskox, kangaroo, macaw, alligator, and only 27 income. Muskox goes actually, so maybe looking for a bigger herbivore. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mr. Pelican. Pelican, uh, oh, Jason. Pelican is insane value with our uh, aquarium. Rhino as well. Jason does get snapping. 
I have a feeling he's going to be tempted by the Rhino. Can't really blame him because it gives him another project to do, like 5 Australia. Yeah. But leaving the Pelican open feels really, really bad. Yeah, this should just be snapping up the Pelican. Upgrading animals now. Yeah, this is the thing. Jason doesn't really want to break, so sponsors has to be X down now. Jason hasn't spent his one worker. Hmm, I guess you still have time to go for unis. Not really much else to do. Size 3, so we are going to see this guy come out. And size 2, 4... Wombat, maybe? Yeah, Wombat makes sense. Oh, he does have a project to do. I like third partner zoo. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Did forget about Bamboo Forest. Makes getting rid of the muskox feel slightly bad, but there's still the kangaroo to release. And grabbing five income, I think, is fine. Also, yeah, I like size three here. You could uh, really make a case for drawing three cards, though. The, the downside is still no hand size uni. Ooh. Covers up the draw a card from range and gets rid of the wombat. That's, that's a good read from Jason there. That size two is 100% for the wombat. And yeah, I assume we keep architectural. So we're gonna have a single pilfer here. Also now hitting the aquarium endgame. Gives up the money. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is give up the wombat that you just denied. <laughs> Yeah, not the end of the world anyway, there's still the third petting zoo to come out. Uh, so pretty decent point lead now, but Jason does still have... Oh, this is kind of awkward actually. Jason does still have the... Does still have the rhino, but also released the platypus, which means if he wants to get five Australia, it's further back. But could also just go for five habitats, I guess. Uh, size 4 is for the rhino, so the size 3 is for the sea lion, the New Zealand sea lion that we saw him take earlier. Does have some pack synergy. That makes a lot of sense, getting the manga bay. So yeah, okay, so the size 4 is for the manga bay. Kiosk as well is fine. Oh, we didn't see the eagle up here. Definitely worth a snap there. Mm, is it actually? I think you could afford to draw from the deck and then break five and snap up the eagle. So I don't think there's any way for Jason to get the eagle right away. Oh no no don't don't be stupid of course there is. One bag gets played as well. Okay, yeah, so Jason does still have five Australia. No pouching, so there's Rhino and Sea Lion uh, New Zealand Sea Lion in here, those are the two cards. Does get the ex extra action from the Manga Bay, and I don't think you need herbivore breeding, maybe just draw from the... Well, I guess it makes enough sense because still no hand size. At this stage, I don't think you go for universities at all. And herbivore breeding does give the reputation needed 
to get the animals upgraded at least to play the rhino. Just the break here. Still kind of even right now. Engineer could be interesting if we have plans of filling the map. Could definitely see that being the snap here. Raccoon also does great value when you want to be boosting association late. Could see either of them being snaps. Opponent probably looking at the wolf for the pack. It's going to give good uh, good value there. <laughs> probably a bit late for uh, expert in predators though. I think from Jason's perspective, breaking five makes sense because now he's the one that has big animals such as rhino and uh, sea lion to play. So you don't really mind a break to get more income. But Song is in the same position with Eagle, Pelican, Kangaroo. Australia Partner Zoo for the... Hmm. Gives you the discount on Pelican, which I guess is the next animal. Uh, I think America has a lot of value as well coming up though, because you're definitely going to be playing Eagle and Raccoon. I'm not sure that there's time to play Kangaroo, so I think overall the, the uh, America's partners who saves the most money. Yeah, build four for Kangaroo, release it. I do wonder the next sequence of animals. So this guy is off the team for sure, but Song still only has one worker. So I guess he's going to build a size one in America at least, maybe size one and size four for the eagle or something, or even for the kangaroo. Yeah, so that does look like the kangaroo and then size one. Yeah, okay. Little detail, but touching the rock just in case you ever re release the raccoon or want to play something else there. Point building a size 4 for the rhino now, we know that. They have a nice sequence of moves coming up. Maybe even better than songs, uh, rhino plus sea lion into Australia 5. So you can definitely afford to pouch that guy. The nice thing about this size 4 is you release the kangaroo and then the pelican fits right in there. So you don't pouch the pelican. Yeah, okay, yeah. Alligator can go. There's no room for it. One rep is needed for sure. And then I guess you take two appeal from the raccoon. Okay, just a little kiosk there to fill the map. I think I'd still prefer a pavilion, even though this does give three income. I don't know that the income matters that much. Nice three pack. Not amazing, but it's okay. Yeah, we can assume Australia five. Bring up the enclosure, very nice. Size 2 as well to help fill up the map, I like. Oh, now beautiful bonuses. 5 money over 2 X's, hmm. Hmm. I guess it's more than 2 X's because the next move is probably causing the break, so it's really only 1 X. Donating I like when there's about to be a break. So now 74 to 73, uh, but the opponent's going to about to do Australia 5 and get to like at least 88. How are they looking for their... 
they can even unlock their last thing so they get to like 93 they take a cards action I guess it doesn't really matter that much but I think in their position I'd just prefer to X out but they probably need a way to finish the game after they do Australia 5 Either way, this is... Yeah, I think you have to cause the break here. And then you have to try to build to fill up the map or something. Yeah, you can use X's on build to fill up the map. The main thing is, as long as uh, Jason doesn't end the game next move, you have time to build. And because you have the eagle, you're always guaranteed to... Uh, Oh, it's interesting actually. Do you just play the pelican and then build with the pelican's action, I guess? And then play the eagle after? Pretty interesting to see the players on 70 points each and no one like close to 10 rep. Sorry, no one close to like 15 rep, which is a very typical position to be in. Guided school tours makes sense for the opponent because they still have this spot uncovered. I'd either snap that or snap nothing. I think I'd snap it though. Snaps nothing just in case you reveal Sun Bear or. Well, Sun Bear's not really a threat. Other Eagle could be. They do snap up guided school tours. Spending their X. I'm going to assume that they're gonna... No, oh, they take X's, so they probably have another project. Well, okay, they can do two primates, so they definitely have another project. Uh, it's just gonna take another turn to get there because they have to, okay, they can play guided school tours, or they can build for guided school tours. So their plan is to end the game in two turns, build to play guided school tours and then primates, which does give Song some time. Yeah, okay, I like playing the Pelican. Building a size four. Can't really afford to play much else. Okay, Aviary makes sense because it allows you to play Eagle and Marabou and oh, it's actually perfect money to do both. Well, well calculated there. Don't need to spend X's on animals. Size four. So I guess instead of uh, instead of doing primates too, the plan is to just... Okay, if you have an American animal there, you can unlock the cube that way. Size 2 as well, so it must have two animals that they can still afford. Playing Guide to School Tour is definitely the right move. I guess you do end the game here. I don't know if there's much else to do in Song's position. I like Marabou first. We're watching a replay at the moment. This is what we do every Friday here. We do some replay analysis for ARC. Okay, Marabu unlocks the last cube, that's nice. To appeal. Eagle as well as the ninth water icon for Aquarium. 
and we can get two rep, but it doesn't matter. So I don't need to worry about that. Can get our uh, money to donate. It's really not a great way to finish. Uh, only two CP with a donation. But 118 is a pretty good cross. Also fully maxed out architectural and hydrologist and aquarium. So there's six endgame shields. So 136. Opponent does have guider school tour points and federal grant points. Uh, well, they don't have federal grants at the moment. Maybe the first time ever we're not seeing that unless there's a rep coming here. Okay, do you remember the wolf with the pack? Not a sun bear, is it? No, it's a peer. I think I like playing to peer first. Uh, oh, but no cards in hand. I still like digging first, I guess. Ooh, actually a slight one point mistake that grabbing the rep is better. Grabbing the rep gets you the end game for federal grants. So one point lost there. Also maxed out diverse. Very close finish after all that. Really hard to fight a nine water icon aquarium, but the opponent did have some good things like getting species first, Rhino into, into Australia 5 was really nice. I think they went a bit too hard for pack and only finished with four. There was no like added bonus for going for pack. So it felt kind of forced. Like when you're paying three pack animals, it's not amazing value. Cause you want to start with the cheaper ones like a Martin or something or Caracal, like to build up the predator icons and then play your pack ones later. But if you're starting with the pack, it's not amazing. Both players unlocked all their cubes. And looking at song stats here, is a petting zoo fan. Pretty nice draw to get the third petting zoo sort of in the middle of the game there. I think nice play from the opponent to deny the wombat at that key point of the game. Yeah, even with the even with the extra one point, wouldn't have made a difference. How many turns was that? So yeah, small tip for uh, anyone that streams and wants to go back to the game stats, just click on the BGA icon in the top left corner. 31 turns, five breaks as well. They were sharing the break duties. Thanks for tuning in, STD. We got two more games to look at tonight. Uh, one arc game and then a quick Azul game. Second game is something that I've watched a lot of replays on Board Game Arena. I've never seen this happen. Like, what is going on here? I'm legitimately wondering if there's some sort of display that hides uh, snakes. And if that's like a feature that I don't know about, because that's pretty cool if that's the case. I know there are a lot of people that like don't like snakes or spiders, so if there's an option that hides them, that's really cool. Oh really? That is actually a thing, wow. I'm impressed. Anyway, this is a game from Propaganda Panda. Uh, very high rated player, currently top 10 in Arena. I didn't mention, but Song Chen is uh, currently number two in Arena. Propaganda Panda's top 10, around where I am at the moment. We're both sort of fighting for that top 10 spot. And a pretty interesting opening hand. Baboon Rock is actually very, very playable here with uh, Primus as one of the projects. It's actually one of the better cards that I'd hope to draw. We also do have the Mandrill, which is pretty late game. 
but very relevant with the two icons and the boon roll because I'd, I'd be keeping both of these for sure. I don't know if the bush baby is a bit too greedy because then it's like two unplayable animals. But I also don't... Martin for Asia 2 makes sense. And... Maybe it is just the bush baby. I guess fox or petting zoo has some upside as well being playable. Uh, end goal is a favorite zoo in climbing park. So favorite zoo, nice. It does keep the petting zoo. I think it makes sense. One cool thing about park restaurant that we're going to see both players do actually is the little petting zoo over the player sponsor. There's like two good petting zoo spots. Petting zoo spot here, so you get grab the X and then player sponsor for money. Very good with Baboon Rock because it's normally very awkward to get that X token to play it, but playing it here is expensive, but it saves you a lot of time. The other cool spot on this map is Petting Zoo up here, which gives you a rep and then into card draw. If there's something like a side entrance in uh, slot two or something, you can just grab it instantly. So those are two spots to keep an eye out for. Mandrill is expensive, but it does give a lot of points. And particularly because of the requirements, this is like your key to getting to Primax 5. You need 3, it gives you 2, you have Primax 5. Yeah, we, we don't really care about the multiplier on cards. Uh, we mainly care about the double icon it gives. But it does also give decent points for its, uh, for its cost. It's just very hard to play. That's the main, that's the main reason we don't see it that often. Anyway, opponent is first player. They do just draw from the deck, so I think nice start for uh, Mr. Panda here, being able to grab Asia Partner Zoo. When Asia 5 is blocked off like this, getting Asia 2 is a, like a pretty big deal, I think, because Asia 4 is just not really worth going for. I don't know, did the opponent beat Dwarven Time? I'm not sure. The opponent definitely beat me and then made fun of me for, me for not reaching 100 points, so they are red-thumbed from me. They do the petting zoo move, and they use to play Foreign Institute, so we can assume that they're going to grab the two, rep two Reputation Uni and then upgrade a card. Mr. Panda does the same move to play Baboon Rock. Very nice as well here, covering a lot of the park restaurant. Opponent does grab that, grab that uni. It would be very scary if sponsors was the upgrade here, but I don't really like the build upgrade. It does let you surround the restaurant this round, I guess, but then you don't have money to play animals as well. So you're either getting your income from animals or from building around the restaurant. It's like the same thing. It doesn't matter. Size one for the Martin uh, has perfect amount of money to play both. Opponent does just play single petting zoo. Pouches as well. Nice. I like break five here. It does let the opponent cause a break before Mr. Panda plays animals, but at the same time, it doesn't matter because he already has an income lead as well. So even if he doesn't get to play animals, it, it doesn't hurt him that much. But the opponent just decides to build three. It's You can totally see the temptation, but I, I don't think I'd ever do this here. The temptation is you surround the restaurant with three more spots and put like a nice kiosk down. So he's going to go from 10 income up to, let's see, kiosk pavilion size one, up to 15. So it's plus five income, but at the same time, you're letting, you're letting Propaganda Panda play two animals here. And you already know that, well, I guess you don't know, but you can assume there's a size one coming out and probably a petting zoo as well. Not a bad snap, uh, not a bad hunt, I mean. There are a lot of rude players on BGA. I, I'm not sure this guy's particularly rude. 
So Propaganda Panda went from 12 income to 16, so like about even, but now this build action is very awkwardly placed behind animals. Opponent does break for 5 now. So we'll see what this first, first card's action is. There's there's some interesting things, like the opponent has two science, so you could totally make a case for snapping up release or the panda. Even the petting zoo I like, because you're both competing over petting zoo animals. But Propaganda Panda decides to snap up Aquarium, which I, I did not see coming, because he doesn't even have the rep to play it right now. Uh, I'm not going to say it's a mistake at all. I think it's just a different way of playing that's cool. My, my order of snapping would probably be petting zoo first. Like if my if the opponent snapped up aquarium I'd be scared but they haven't shown any like rush for it. They could have snapped up in the first round which makes me think they don't particularly want it. And another super interesting move here, I would always be supporting Asia 2. The opponent's not threatening it, but it just gives you a project. You can grab extra work, you can grab snapping, you can grab five income, whatever. You also get to upgrade a card, like upgrading build, but it just takes the two rep uni to be able to play down Aquarium. And I think even I'd be tempted to take hand size to sort of uni block the opponent. Because the opponent's going to take hand size now. That gets them another upgrade. Uh, means they can play the petting zoo animal from range. So I wonder if we're going to build to a... Uh, no, I can't even... Doesn't Don't have the reputation to uh, do anything about it. Okay, size 4 for monkey. Oh, there's a nice 2 sequence coming up here. I, I did like this, actually. Opponent plays monsters at 3, which is always terrifying to see. Uh, it's not side entrance, thankfully. It is guided school tours, though. Actually, yeah, I think a sizable mistake from the opponent uh, because they know that Propaganda Panda has Aquarium and they're going to build it over this spot to draw a card and get 5 money and you draw the petting zoo that you're both fighting over. Oh yeah, actually I was thinking over the 5 money here, it does like, it covers a lot of spots but it allows the monkey to be played but I guess if you're drawing the petting zoo you just play that instead. So I wonder what the opponent's going to play here. Unless they have another, another petting zoo, they can't play much. And this is the thing, their sort of build is behind animals because of that first round action. So now they have to spend an extra build before playing animals. That's one of the reasons I didn't like them building three when they could have just caused the break. Of course, I'm not one to talk about wasting X tokens. But I'll, I'll point it out when it's there. I'll assume this is for the red panda. Uh, they can't afford it though, right? If they do have an animal, it gets them an another worker, which they can use. Digging, probably just dig away release, but I don't think it matters. Yeah. Kind of scary. They do have a playable animal. Uh, or it could be the badger, I guess. Okay, thorny devil. Doesn't fit a project, but it's just a small animal to play. Uh, actually does help with both of these endgames. So without hand size, be more inclined to snap something up. 
like low mountain range would be a potential snap, but you could also just draw from the deck. Unfortunately, not amazing. Crocodile is probably, probably the least playable. Herbivore breeding could be interesting, but no herb herbivores here. Project. Oh, we could be seeing uh, release, research, uh, small animals, sea cave. Okay. It's good timing by the opponent to get that down right before the break. Does get him up to nine rep. And they still upgrade association before cards, actually. I, do, I wonder the reasoning on that, because they, they're still two partner zoos away, so they're going to be stuck on 9 rep for a long time. This is the break. Oh yeah, Komodo Dragon release is actually really good for our Propaganda Panda here. This is one of the best animals to release, because it has so little appeal. And it's also pretty cost effective because it gets such a discount for, re for requiring two Asia icons itself. Opponent just draws from the deck. There's a couple of interesting water icons, but I don't think Penguin Pool's a good pick at all here. Just because it's like a third building on the map that just takes up too much enclosure space. Okay, exactly what Robert said, Komodo Dragon into release. Yeah, can even put in size 4 because you're going to release it, doesn't matter. I like that a lot. Opponent just playing animals at 3. Tells us that they don't have a sponsor or they're going to... Oh, okay, they're going to... Did they grab the red panda? Yeah, they did. So they're going to play the red panda and then either do... Uh, double sponsor or just cause the break. Tamarin as well is nice. Great release. Snapping as well. Uh, I think I'd just take Low Mountain Rage as the best, best uh, potential card. Finally getting first upgrade and choosing to upgrade animals. It is the Penguin Pool, okay. I'm curious to see if he's going to try to fit it on the map as well. Okay, opponent has time to grab a, their first partner zoo. This does lock them into getting the size 3 bonus here, because they don't have a use for the rep. Which is still fine. Size 3 is what they would want anyway. Science Institute, okay, that's very suspicious. Have another snake. That is that's actually really cool. I, I need to look at the options a bit more. Totally get why you'd want to hide our snakes. Propaganda Xing out build because I only just have enough money to play the, the Duke here. The Mandrill still still waiting away in the corner there. I guess you do have room for like penguin pool up here, size five here, aviary here. I think if you want to put down penguin pool, you do want an aviary. There is a bird there as well. Okay, can we expect science museum coming up? It would be very weird to play that and not cause the break. Yeah, okay, science museum. Nice boost for the opponent. They still do have a worker. So it's not like they want to break, but this gives them money to stay into the round, stay in the round like they can build now fully. Mm, be very tempted by this combo. Low mountain range condor, like I'd snap up low mountain here. Gets rewarded not for doing so though. Uh, denying this from the opponent's pretty big, as well as getting third petting zoo and a primate. I don't even know what you get rid of here. Maybe this guy, but he is the third primate, I guess not. Maybe Penguin Pool after all. 
Oh yeah, sorry, the, the research, yeah. Oh crap, we need battery. All right, be right back. Okay, hopefully you guys didn't see that I'm not wearing pants, but... Okay, get, yeah, get, getting rid of gorilla field research uh, makes sense. When it does get to build fully. They would really love a third worker so they can get another partner zoo. I don't think they have... Actually, the opponent can support two Asia first. Hmm. I guess that is their plan. So, propaganda still doesn't have hand size, and you really want to keep at least four of these cards. So, I guess you do play Penguin Pool and give up two Asia. That is the spot for it. Third water icon for Aquarium. Now, I guess you... You could play the monkey or the sheep, I guess. Let's see which one actually. The X tokens. Um, they actually give the same amount of appeal because of the uh, baboon rock, so I like the primate here first. Maybe you find the horse or something just appears in your hand later. You can also make the opponent still like try to deny petting zoo animals, but that's not even that bad for them. Oh, so the opponent wants to spend their worker before the break and grabbing the third uni does make sense to get some 10 money first. But they do give up to Asia by doing this. I don't know that it's that big of a deal, but it might be. The the uni obviously very good giving uh two conservation points with Science Museum. Donating, I donating I can kind of justify because you have 31 income. Five is not that much, but we're not really racing towards any five or eight rewards now anymore. Oh. Cards action first. That is spicy. The problem is you want to keep everything in this hand. I, I think I'd just cause the break. And you're still going to have to discard one of these. Instead of Animals 5. I, I like the Animals action from Propaganda Panda because this is still like great to get down before the break. And like the main issue was that you want to keep all the cards in your hand, so that's why I don't really like the cards action here. Because all the opponent probably has a petting zoo animal. Oh no, they have an Agama, which is nice value. They don't have that many cards to sunbathe here though. They do have two, so maybe they do have a petting zoo animal as well. Okay, just playing the badger. Okay. Yeah, they're we're still working towards their end games for both of these. They have species diversity for it. Yeah, now the thing is that you're causing the break anyway, but you do have X tokens. But the card's action was basically a wasted move because you're going to have to get rid of something here. I don't want to get rid of any of these. Yeah, so the snowy owl goes. I mean, like, the problem was that you're always keeping these three cards. Um, you either snap up the condor or the petting zoo to deny it from the opponent. 
all the stoat okay because europe is a project all right okay i'm down another monkey appears yeah neither player's really been fighting for europe uh the badger does give extra value in that case Opponent having no X tokens is really going to hurt. This is, this like is guaranteed to be break five. Oh my God, it's not. Oh my God. Okay, I did not expect that to come out. Thirteen appeal. Th this map is single-handedly the best map for native farm animals. Like look at how easy it is to just leave edge spots because all the rock in the water is like in the middle of the map. I'm not even trying that hard. You could get an extra like four down here. Another couple over here. My goodness. Okay, so all of a sudden the opponent's got a pretty sizable lead, I would say. They have no cards in hand though, and okay, they're about to upgrade cards. But they're also ahead in like upgrade tempo. Asia into size two is fine. Not having these upgrades is gonna really. How's the lag, everyone? Any anyone getting any lag? Opponent donates. Yeah, I mean, always keeping favorites over here. Yeah, OBS just OBS just disconnected. Uh, but my internet's still connected, so. Anyway, we're, we're sort of reaching the end of these games, so hopefully we can make it to the end. Size 5 does come down for the Mandrill. Uh, we need an Africa partner zoo. Pilfering could be a nice little break. Opponent does take Boa Constrictor. Putting this monkey in range as well. I, I'm going to assume this is X token to get up Africa partner zoo. I don't, don't really see what else the move would be. Uh, so we can always play McCork and petting zoo. I, I'm wondering if he's going to do style points to play the sheep, like bragging that he already had a petting zoo, or just not revealing more of his hand and playing the lorikeet. Sort of interesting decision coming up. Opponent. Uh, takes the cards action that they desperately need. Taking monkey makes sense. I think condor could make sense as well because propaganda pandas played down penguin pool, but totally get not uh, uh, drawing it there. Gives up a card. Not the best card to give up, it is a bird, but not the worst either, I guess. I think what that, it tells us more than anything that he does not have a very good hand. Like, well, especially no, like, eagles or sun bear or anything, otherwise you just never give up a card there. Does do the sensible thing and plays down the lorikeet, uh, not revealing information about having the sheep. Opponent draws from the deck. I think the chameleon makes sense for them having size ones and it also being an Asia icon. They do a little constrict. I don't think uh, I don't think it hurts that much though. Anyway, they still have a point lead. They have a decent income lead as well. The only the the main thing that Propaganda Panda has is the Primax 5 and Mandrill, and like the size 5 ready to go for it. I, don't, I, I, yeah, I like break 7 here. 
before the opponent does a project, maybe Europe 2 they could do. Also, you don't really want to use cards because no hand size. Uh, there's a few snappable things. Either Chameleon or Breeding Co-op, I would say. Uh, sorry, Water Playground is a great snap, yeah. Water Playground with Aquarium. Choosing to clever back, I would assume cards. Opponent now spending that X tells us that they don't have a sponsor. Uh, I would guess that they're gonna grab snapping and snap up one of these sponsors to play. Maybe breeding. Breeding. They're gonna do. They're doing Europe too, so I don't think breeding makes sense. I just grab a worker instead. Which means I would expect they're gonna just sponsor five break, or they're gonna exit out. I do like snapping there for them. Get a, get a playable sponsor. Uni here. Draws into another monkey, which is not playable just yet. Okay, opponent's doing a little build for action. Okay, they're going to clever down sponsors. That works too, I guess. Very nice water playground. Still a bit behind on points, but this animal's action will uh, catch them up. Yeah, that's the main difference right now. The opponent doesn't look like they have any projects. So it would be pretty huge if the opponent got something like a, a Rhino here. Or maybe if they were working towards 5 Europe. Spending an X to play animals. Getting 3x tokens. Game's actually really close to any. Like, does the game end next move? Bird of Paradise for another X token. Uh, only one worker though. So the game does end with a donation here, actually. Just Primates 5 donation end game. Seems like a pretty hard way to lose from that position, unless well, I don't know, I don't know what, what this could be that would change it. Okay, it's going to be Hornbill plus Veiled Chameleon for Asia Four. Point does boost down build. Yeah, Primates into 12 money, donation, end. Or oh, only just ends. Uh... Yeah, this, this shouldn't be... How many points do we have actually here? Haven't hit the end game for a foreign institute, but have for guided school tours. Native farm has to be a couple. No, it's only one. Two from favorite zoo. Asia 12 money donate. But actually no end game from Baboon Rock. Little bit sad getting to five but not six. Not from Penguin Pool, not from Aquarium Light. Very kind of close to all of these. So maybe it is gonna be a bit closer. Ooh, all four from research. 
actually only just crawling over the line with a two from favorite zoo. Yeah, the opponent having research zoo and then getting into like, I thought Science Institute was very sus, but yeah, having Science Museum helped them a lot. That that native farm animals move halfway through the game was uh, game changing. I thought they were behind until that. That sort of put them ahead. But then like, yeah, the main thing that the opponent didn't have was a like big project to finish on. And the mandrel from the be beginning of the game helped out immensely. Although didn't actually get to use the multiplier on cards. I think that was very quick. 29 turn game? 29. I think both players played it very well. But yeah, gr uh, good win for Propaganda Panda there. Have a look at the current leaderboard to see where everyone is. Yeah, right there, docile between both of us. Still amazed that people can get 2100 in arc, but... Very solid play up here. Anyway, those were the two arc games, so if you're only interested in arc, you can totally tune out now, that's fine. We're gonna have a look at a quick Azul game. Azul is a game that I've played a lot, probably my second most played game behind Ark, I would say, maybe third most played. Uh, we're looking at two familiar faces here, Grim Nova and Brian Boitano, otherwise known as JD. Not really sure what to expect from this. Uh, Brian's actually not that badly rated at all, 300 is decent. Grim is first player though, and I think first player has a pretty sizable advantage in, in Azul, as well as in Ark, but in Azul especially, I think. I would expect you know how scoring works if you're 300 rated, unless you've only been playing against Grim and just like farmed him for rating. I think 300s know what they're doing. Yeah, Grim does start with three yellow. I think it's a fine first move. Yellow typically the worst color because the thing about yellow is, well, the thing about Azul is you always want to be filling in the first two rows. So all the colors in the first two rows are equal. But then if you look down at rows three, four, five, white is sort of central to all of them, but yellow is all over the place. And the way that you score most of your points in Azul is from uh, tiles being adjacent to one to one another and if you're filling in tiles yellow tiles 5 and yellow tile 4 they're just not going to be adjacent to anything else that you have whereas white you can fill them in and it will be adjacent to other things so yellow probably the weakest color but I think starting with 3 is perfectly fine a common response here would be taking the first player token but there's some other things of interest I think two reds are a very defendable move. You sort of, Grim would be eyeing the two red here to sort of touch the three yellow, sort of deny that sort of column. But it does give Grim first player with two black. I think two black on line two is fine. It's a good move even. One black from Brian, sort of focusing on the same column. Uh, I am interested to see where all these, especially all this white, where is all this white going to go? Both players should be, like the white should be interesting for both players because they have sort of committed to this fourth column here and you need five white to complete it. Grim does hesitate before taking one white. It does leave a few things open. So a nice little trick that Brian can do here is taking one of something, like maybe you take one blue or even one white. And what it does is it groups up a lot of things in the middle. So for example, if you took one white, you would group up 
three yellow and three blue together. So it means on the following turn, you would get three of something for your line three. That's a little common trick to look out for. You could do that with any of any of these because it's going to group up three of something anyway. Brian does take a yellow, which makes it a, a sort of very easy block for Grim here. I would definitely be looking to take two yellow. The other thing that taking two yellow does is it leaves three remaining colors. And when there's three of something and it's your opponent's turn, they have to take two things and you only take one of them. And if Brian is taking two things here, it probably means he's going to discard something. Two yellows is a nice block. Uh, it does leave blue and white. Blue, blue Brian is pretty happy with. Uh, part of the same column. So I think leaving Grim the white as well, very nice for him. I'd be uh, very comfortable putting it down there. The the yellow, I don't know. The yellow I might have discarded. The thing is that uh, going for like four and five at the same time is very fraught with danger. We've already seen six yellow out, so if there's no yellow next round, uh, line four is blocked for a quite a long time. I think the move Brian has to do here is just floor these two red because the problem when you commit to four tiles on column four and then you don't commit to the fifth one is this red tile is going to block Brian for the rest of the game. Because we've already seen four red which is like the average amount but he's also not first player this round. So like two red here would be a great opening first move for uh, for Grim, which he does do. It makes it really hard to finish this. Brian has some nice moves. Yeah, the really awkward thing is uh, only two yellows this whole round as well, but I'd be looking at taking first player with a single blue. Decides to take a single blue from the tray instead of from the floor. It's fine. Tactically grouping up all these whites is not bad at all because it's going to make Grim discard a lot if he wants to complete this tile this round, which I think he does. It does hurt discarding three things. The other good thing is Brian has basically no interest in white this round, so the more white that Grim takes, the less white that Brian will take. does take a single yellow, which means uh, Grim should respond by taking a single yellow himself to sort of block the line. Good good defensive play, also not a bad tile at all for Grim to take. And then I think in this position, as Brian, you just take blue, sort of deny three blue from line three for Grim. Good move so far. Grim misses the same trick uh, as Brian did in first round, which is that you want to be grouping up three black here for your line three. Especially black is the worst thing for Brian to take because he has to discard all of it. Can't, it can't fit in line one. So if you at least leave three there, it gives you the option of filling in row three. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world if you don't fill in this sort of black tile one, which is adjacent to everything. But you can fill it in later, I think. And now it is sort of that situation where there are now three tiles remaining. So th there were four remaining, which means Grim has to take two things. But I think Grim could have made it so there were only three different tiles remaining. Two blues are fine as well, though. It's a nice central tile. Two white and just flooring two black. So there's a lot of discards in this round. But... Grim has completed a couple more tiles, especially also working on this uh, column, basically already done. Very interesting for black here. I think 
as Grimm being first player for the third time in a row. I think you do have to start with it because it's too good to leave for uh, for Brian here. Brian has nearly completed column five. Sadly, only seeing one red, so this column, this uh, row won't be complete again. But four black is exactly what he needs to fill in this. And yeah, if we're going to take black, there's only one spot it can go. Not exactly the best tile to finish, but more more of a denial uh, take than anything. Taking one yellow, good move. There's only two this round, so I would expect uh, Grim to take one yellow. Thinking about it though, but yeah, I think this is a forced move. A lot of white grouping up, so... It could be okay for Brian, but I wouldn't mind just leaving the white here, and this could potentially force a lot of discarding for Grim. Can totally understand like the appeal of seeing a tile that's connected to everything. But I think in that position I'd probably just leave it. Grim can't complete yellow in line two, could complete white or blue, but I think he'd be more inclined to well actually I'm not sure. I think in this position, actually, you just take one blue and finish your line three, and then you either get back two blue or two white. Now, the problem is that this red is also important. Maybe I do like the red first, actually. Means that Brian probably takes a single blue. It's going to be a little bit ugly for Grim the last move here. I don't think there's really a good choice to take. Like, you could take one blue for line three, you could take two blue for line two, but it, it ends badly either way. You're, you're going to be discarding a lot of black. Actually, the, uh, no, that's like the same result, I think. Yeah, Brian just takes one. No, actually, that did work out better. Uh, although I think I'd probably fill in line two ahead of line three. It's less adjacent, but it's one less discard, and these lines one and two will have max adjacency at the end of the game. But actually, I like the sequence that he did. How are our points looking? Brian's slightly ahead in points, but the main problem is this line 5 has been blocking him. And we've seen a lot of white go, so there's really very little chance that there's going to be 5 white left for this in the last round. Like, almost 0%. Brian is first player, though. No, no lot of 2 red groups up, which is sad. Not really much black either, so we could also struggle to get any column done, honestly. Not sure what you start with though. I could totally see the three yellow going in line two. It's also not that much of an urgency because there's seven yellow this round. Okay, two blue there is very defensible. Grim makes a good first move, which is to grab first player token going into round five. Round five is like the ideal time that you do want first player token, even though it's good for every round. Brian, round five is the most important to deny those key tiles. I don't like putting it in line two, though. I think just put it in line one and get two yellows grouped up later. Three yellows, I think I'd prefer in line two. Uh, the problem with going for so many tiles on line four is they it's like the adjacency they, they just don't score that much and now it's going to be pretty awkward to finish the line two here if uh if grim was looking to block takes two reds which i think is a good tile for him to complete nice and adjacent to a lot of things 
one yellow, one red. <laughs> one red denies this uh, line five again. One blue. One yellow, and then what do you do here? Oh, one yellow here now, oh no, yeah. I think you always finish line two and then you either get yellow or blue for line one. But here Brian just takes one yellow and he's very happy about it because he finishes line one as well. Taking two black is a good uh, counter punch though, just denies the line two. Should, you should really take two black there, yeah. One red makes sense because anything else will have to be discarded. And one blue, definitely the right move. You could even, yeah, well, you definitely want to put it here because actually Grim hasn't completed a column either yet. But we should be seeing enough blue coming in the last round. Maybe not a lot, actually. There's 10 blue tiles over here and three gone here already, and we want like three more here and one more here at least. So there's not a lot of blue to go around. Brian does have a point lead. So I think Brian has a decent shot at winning if he denies three blue for this column. But the problem is any blue will have to be discarded. And now th this is like the problem with committing to a, a line that's not part of your column. You just don't know how the colors are going to turn out. So there wasn't a lot of red in rounds one to four, but now there's all the red and there's just not a lot of use for it. One yellow, I think is a, one yellow is okay. I actually wouldn't mind taking two yellow here just to deny two yellow for this. Cause now I think two yellow is a pretty decent reply from Brian. Takes a red, okay. Yeah, the thing is that does group up the blue, which means uh, this column's getting completed, but not not necessarily the column and the row yet. So denying one blue... I think denying one blue is the right move here. It's, it's worth a lot of points to Grim. It's worth, well, it's a seven point tile, but it also means there are three colors left. And it's not like this tile, this uh, line five tile is worth anything. It's worth one point if it gets completed. Takes a while. I think that the same principle though, you have three colors left, which is fine, but I think taking the blue there and just flooring it is probably game losing, honestly because it's like putting the blue on the floor is one point worse for you, but it's seven points worse for Grim here. Four black is fine. Seven red is not the worst for Grim because you can always just put, put them on line five. It's not going to score that much, but it's also not going to hurt that much. Yeah, and just the, habit, this, the extra points from having the complete column, both players completed one row, but extra points from one column won the, won the game. Yeah, honestly, I think that the main problem here is focusing too much on lines four in particular. It's cool to complete them all, but they're just not worth that many points. It's, it's like, it's a lot of effort to not get that many points for it. So when I play Azul, my main focus is on lines one and two. I make it like a mandatory goal to finish them each round. Line three is an optional goal, but still very nice to complete. And for the whole game, my, my objective is to complete one column, maybe two if I'm getting like insanely lucky tile draws, but mainly one column is enough. Uh, good tactics though from Brian throughout the game. I think... A few things could be fixed up, but 
not that unlucky, just, just a couple of choices that could be fixed up. Still a close game. I, I do wonder how their head-to-head is. I would expect Brian wins more because he's higher rated, but a good showing from Grimm. Anyway, if anyone is still around, thanks everyone for watching. That's uh, all we're going to look at today. And we'll be back next week with some more Ark Nova. So thanks for watching. Have a good rest of the day.